Hello everybody, it's Dr. Galvin with our next installment of our weight loss video series. I misspoke last time, I said we were going to talk about hormones this time, but I actually promised we were going to do intermittent fasting and a couple of our viewers called me out on it. So we are going to talk about fasting today. I promise we're going to do hormones next and there's lots of hormones that are involved in weight loss and actually intermittent fasting or intermittent feeding um, actually manipulates some of those hormones. And so when we talk about fasting or intermittent feeding, um, what are we talking about exactly? You know, we've been fasting as humans for, for, you know, for many thousands of years. It's an integral part of many societies, many religions. So there's, it's, there's a long history of it and there's some very broad benefits from fasting. We know that it, it's just an eight in weight loss. It improves insulin sensitivity. It helps with type two diabetes. It improves um, heart disease. It can have an effect in fighting cancer. It improves liver disease. It can enhance longevity. It makes us feel better. It can improve mental clarity. It can improve sleep. Um, and it's, like I said before, it's, it's done universally. One of the big effects it has is on insulin. And insulin is a hormone that we're gonna talk a little bit more about next week. But you know, insulin is a storage hormone. And what it does is it lets us take glucose and that we get from typically carbohydrates in our food supply. And it lets us utilize that carbohydrate for short-term energy. But if we have extra carbohydrate, it tells us to store that as fat for a rainy day. And if we are hunter-gatherers as, as we were a long time ago, and we were not sure where our next meal was coming from, the ability to store excess glucose as fat was a very important survival adaptation because if we did not come across a food source for a couple of days, we were able to have some storage and survive. If we didn't do that, we would die. Unfortunately, what's happened as we have developed our technology and ability to kind of have McDonald's and, and all this constant food supply, you know, our genetics haven't changed at the rate that our technology has changed. And so we still respond the same way. And now we have this constant influx of, of simple carbohydrates and we keep releasing insulin and it has a lot of detrimental effects as we get exposed to this. And so now we're storing fat all the time, which leads to weight gain and obesity and a lot of these sort of Western diet related problems, hypertension, heart disease, obesity, diabetes. And so we can utilize fasting as a way of combating some of these things. And when we talk about intermittent fasting or what I really would prefer to call it intermittent feeding, how does that help? Well, We've talked about restrictive diets and how restrictive diets don't typically work. And if you think about it, you know, our bodies look at our two main sources of energy differently. And, and those two main sources of energy are glucose, which is sort of a, a short-term fast-acting source of energy, and fat, which is a little bit of a longer-term sort of source of energy. And I kind of look at glucose as sort of our checking account and fat as our savings account. And you know, if we get into some short-term financial difficulty, where do we spend from? You know, we spend from our checking account. We don't really spend from our, our, our savings account until things get a little bit more dire. And, and, you know, that's for kind of a rainy day, get into, you know, some trouble. That's when we kind of dip into the savings account. And so if we are starving to death, you know, we, we, we unless we're in that situation, we're going to kind of preferentially burn our glucose. And we're going to actually go out of our way to protect our savings account. And so if we just decide, well, my dietary plan is to just not eat anything, well, our body's going to kind of enter into this sort of starvation mode and we'll actually protect fat and we'll preferentially burn glucose. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually try to figure out other ways of getting extra glucose. And sometimes that's by cannibalizing other places because we can actually produce glucose by utilizing either connective tissue or protein and, and actually through a process called gluconeogenesis, we can actually make glucose from these other tissues. And so if we just go to a strictly restrictive diet, sometimes what we'll do is the body will actually protect that savings account and not burn fat, but we'll actually utilize other sources. We'll go burn through our glycogen stores in our liver and then we'll start burning some muscle and we don't really get these effects of burning fat like we think. And then people will lose weight, but they're burning muscle and not 
really losing fat like we want to. But if we're fully fed and we instead do a short fast, maybe 16, 18 hours, the body's not starving. And what it's able to do is it kind of utilizes the glucose that's around. And then because we're not starving, as those glucose molecules sort of are used up, since the body's not starving, it then starts utilizing fat because it's like, well, you know, we're, we're not starving to death. We have this extra fat around. It's okay to use that. And then when we refeed, the system sort of resets. Um, and we're able to utilize those other stores. Now we can actually, in our clinic, we, we use intermittent feeding, sort of these 16, um, 8 or, or longer fasts. And sometimes we actually use longer fasts, one to three days, maybe on a quarterly basis, because they can be done very effectively to mobilize fat. Because what we want to do is we want to use fast as a way of accessing that stored fat and to trick the body into thinking it's okay to burn it. Because if we just restrict things willy-nilly, a lot of times what we do is we lock that fat away and the body doesn't want to utilize it. So there are some tricks to utilizing intermittent fasting effectively, but a very simple thing that you can do without any medical supervision or without any um, supplements or medications or things like that that you can implement just today is a really simple, you know, 16-8 intermittent fast. And what we generally tell our patients, which is really easy to do, is, you know, pick an eight-hour window. And for most people, what works really well is, you know, limit your, your eating to an eight-hour window, typically between noon and 8 p.m. Don't eat or drink anything after that time. So you're going to basically stop eating at eight o'clock, nothing but maybe black coffee and water, and you're gonna skip breakfast, and then you're gonna break your fast at, at 12 or one o'clock, and you're gonna eat normally during that period of time, and then you're gonna kind of fast during that, that other period. And we use a, a lot of um, other things. We, we typically, um, to dry fat even further, we, we use a lot of low carbohydrate, high fat protocols to, to get that to work even better. Um, a lot of times it has to be done in conjunction with some, some pretty specific guidance, but you don't even need to follow a particular eating plan to get the benefits of an intermittent feeding plan or an intermittent fasting plan. If this is something that you're interested in, we have a lot of different programs here at Vitality, either directly designed and directed by me to just online programs that utilize an app or an app in conjunction with a coach. So if you're interested, go to our website. We have lots of things. But if it's just something you want to you know, implement on your own, just do the 16, 8-hour fast. You'll be surprised at how easy it is, and you'll probably be surprised at the results you're going to get. Next week, we're going to talk about hormones. There's actually lots and lots of hormones that are involved in fat metabolism and regulation of weight. And they, they range from gut hormones like, le like leptin and ghrelin to estrogen to testosterone to thyroid um, to growth hormone. And we're going to talk about all of those. It's going to be a little bit of a longer lecture than this. But this is intermittent fasting in a nutshell. Again, if you want more information, please contact us and we'll talk to you next week.